What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we got Burton Seabell from Fear Factory and Ascension of the Watchers. Thank you so much for your time today, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Alex. Thank you for calling. Yep. It's so awesome to have you here. So we got the new Ascension of the, the first new Ascension of the Watchers album, Apocrypha, coming out uh, October 9th. Being that it's been 12 years since the release of Numinosum, like, do, do you almost consider this like a fresh start or maybe like a new beginning for Ascension of the Watchers? Uh, yeah, that's a way of putting it. I do feel like it's a, a new beginning, a new introduction to the band. We've had uh, over the 12 years, we've had time to grow, uh, time to uh, regroup, uh, so to speak, uh, on concepts and on, not necessarily the concept, but regroup on the, how we want to present the sound. So, um, you know, Numenosum is a very different record than Apocrypha, whereas Numenosum is more of a ambient, ethereal, uh, um, yeah, just more of slightly uh, monotone and texture, whereas um, Apocrypha is a more of a live sound, very full, uh, to me more cinematic than uh, Numinosum, and it's uh, you know it's it's just it's the sound that I've been wanting and been dreaming of for twelve years. <laughs> what, so was it a preconceived idea to sort of make Apocrypha sound the way it is, or did it kind of just happen that way? Was, was there like a lot of improvising involved? No, not improvising. It was, it, it was intentional. It, it, took, it took time to find the right studio and the right producer. And, and luckily I found both of them in the same place. Uh, Chase Lewis happened to have built the uh, North Stone Studio in Wales uh, to his specs, to his specs, yes, and he uh, you know created the right in the right environment. And he's the right producer. He's fresh. He's uh, he's young, and he's uh, he's quite quite talented. Um, before we recorded, Chase and I spoke in length uh, many times about what kind of sound I was looking for. And uh, I, you know, the type of band that I was inspired by, man, you know, specific band albums. I was like, wow, this album sounds great. This album sounds great. And they were all different. So, you know, how can we make this all sound like one album? And, uh, you know, he listened and he accomplished it. It's it quite amazing. Yeah, I've noticed that, like, there was many, di like, I got many different vibes from listening to this album. This could just be my interpretation of it, but I felt like a song like The End Is Always The Beginning is very different from, you know, like a wolf interlude or very different from a song like uh, Key to the Cosmos or something like that. Was there, like, many different emotions felt? Was there, like, many different feelings that you were having through the course of making this? Well, absolutely, and you're absolutely correct. Each, each song is different. Uh, the entire album is a journey in itself, uh, exploring different moods. Uh, these 12 years, the 12 years that we've had over time, I've been demoing songs the entire time, ever since Newman Knows and was released. And uh, I would demo songs after, you know, I was happy, you know, having personal experiences that were very poignant in my life, that, were, that would leave an indelible mark on my on my mind and in my soul. And so in these time periods, I would sit down at guitar and just start strumming chords and arranging uh, music to fit the narrative of how I was feeling. I would do that on guitar, I would do that on piano. So um, and this, this would happen during the course of 10 years during poignant moments in my life. So yes, each, each song is a different mood, each song is a different snippet uh, of my life. Mm -hmm. And it shows that life is not linear. Life is never the same. There's always different aspects of life. And that's something that is captured on this record. Yeah, like, um, it's, so is what we're hearing on this album, is this like how the songs were originally like made and structured? Or like, is this the first initial take of it? Or did these songs change a lot over a span of 12 years? Um, I wouldn't say it changed a lot. The, the original structures, the original arrangements, pretty much 
mostly there. I would say each song, you know, each song that was written is pretty much 95% the way it was when it was first written. Um, it wasn't until production and mixing is that, okay, we wouldn't change the structure, we would just change aspects of, like, okay, take the guitar out, or uh, add this, or do this. So, for the thought process over, t over the 12 years, we were working on, you know, we had to demo the songs, and then we just built upon them over time, and uh, you know, we, by the time we were ready to record, pretty much all the songs were ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny too because I've always said that like the producer or the mixer is like the fifth beetle, the sixth beetle. If you're in Slipknot, the tenth beetle. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> because like I'd imagine working with the mixer and a producer. Like, obviously, you know, they're looking at your vision and looking at your creativity, and they kind of have to you know mix over that to you know help you make it more presentable. But I'd imagine that working with other people, it does open up like a lot more new doors, right? You're absolutely right. And for this album, uh, I trusted Jason's, uh, I trusted Jason implicitly. So I gave him a lot of liberty to um, mix it the way he felt it should be mixed. I gave him liberties of how you know, it should be produced and sound and, uh, and quality. So Jace is a huge part of the sound. And uh, I'm glad I, you know, be the fact that I was able to step away and let someone new come into the fray and really bring the sound into uh, a whole new genre in itself, Jace achieved that. Yeah, definitely. Now, as a vocalist, have you always needed to hear music to come up with lyrics? Or being that, you know, I feel like, you know, concept albums are almost kind of like your specialty with the work in Fear Factory. Do you sometimes have a concept in mind and that can help to dictate the direction of the music? Uh, yes, well, um, it's just a bit of both, really. I, I write all the time, when the, you know, without music. Uh, I write poetry, I write, you know, lyrics are poetry. I write short stories, I write um, personal observations, you know, like essays and things like that, uh, compositional essays, short stories. Um, so I have these written down, so for instance, when I'm sitting, you know, and when I sit down and I'm writing a piece of music, I have an idea of what I want to write about already, but I don't write the lyrics, uh, I don't complete the lyrics until I'm ready to do vocals but I have notes of the songs, of, of the feelings, and up throughout, throughout the course of its writing process. So it's a bit of both, you know? Um, you know, just taking notes and uh, capturing ideas. Maybe it might be just a word, it might be just a line, or it might be a whole, or just the idea of what the song should be about. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not just like, it's not just like some accidental kind of inspiration. It's always something that I've been thinking about already. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had like the best lyrics ever, but then they're always like one syllable over or under like the arrangement of every song? <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, you should be it as a vocalist. You, uh, you have to make things work. You know, if you, can, if you can make it work within the vocal or within the, within the rhythm, and uh, as a writer, sometimes you have to edit. So there's both of that, and you know, um, and I can edit my my words in a way where it doesn't lose the the that the story, it doesn't lose the concept of the song. Mm -hmm. Could being that like since Ascension of the Watchers is. I, I wouldn't say that, you know, because like with, with albums that you've been on in the past, whether it's Demanufacture or Obsolete or Archetype even, like, I feel like, you know, being that those are so concept driven, do you feel like maybe like Ascension of the Watchers could be a little bit more uh, liberating in a way as like you're not, are you not as forced to kind of like follow a storyline and a narrative so much? It is liberating, yes. I'm not, I'm not uh, confined, as they say, to uh, science fiction uh, or socially dystopic type of uh, 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 commentary. Uh, essentially, Watchers is 
it's very personal. Uh, I have it, I feel like I have freedom to write about whatever I want to write about because it's this project, this band is my baby. And so I'm, you know, if I want to write about whatever, you know, something that happened to me, I will have the freedom without feeling uh, self-conscious about what I'm writing. Uh, I'm, you know, for me, essentially, the watchers is my heart on my sleeve. So, if people wanted to get to know who you are personally, you'd recommend that they listen to, you know, the Ascension of the Watchers albums more, right? Absolutely. You know, if, if Ascension of the Watchers reflects my personality, uh, this is what I've always been like. Um, and if you listen to Ascension of the Watchers, uh, you'll realize that. I have a different voice than most metal people I've ever have had in the past. I didn't consider, consider myself a metal person. I never listened to metal bands I like, but I wasn't a metal guy. So if you listen to Essential Watchers and you go back and you listen to like you know, albums like the manufacturer, you hear that, okay, this, 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 my voice has been relatively consistent the entire time. When it comes to melody, I have a different take on melodies. I have a different key for melodies. Um, I, have, I just, it's, it's, I have my own style. And Ascension the Watchers is my style all the way. Yeah, I, I feel like when I, when I listen to your voice, I mean, like when I first heard your voice, the first day, because I, I remember when the last Ascension of the Watchers came out, I was, not to make you feel old, but I was in middle school at the time, but like, um, <laughs> I was able to tell, I feel like when, when I hear your, the dichotomy and how eclectic your voice is, it seems like you have a combination of both bands, like maybe Napalm Death and Godflesh. Those are like the two like similarities, I feel like. I feel like you're Napalm Death and maybe Godflesh is like baby in a way. Well, um, I would say Godflesh more than Napalm Death. Because, uh, like, for instance, when Fear Factor was starting, uh, the one album that, uh, one band that Dino and I were both into was Godflesh. Because uh, I was more on the, I considered Godflesh industrial back then, like really heavy industrial. So that was I was into. Um, so it was Justin Broderick's voice. He would do like a moaning type of thing. I wouldn't call it like a singing, but he was like doing like this chant, moan, almost Gregorian type of thing on, on you know, the, the first Godflesh record or Street Cleaner. Um, so it was that vibe that I was trying you know, trying to emulate when we start when I started doing uh, vocals. Um, Napalm Death, I'd heard Napalm Death. They were, you know, they had great records, but uh, I would say I was inspired more by Justin Broderick and um, and Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. Yeah, definitely. It, it, isn't it funny, too, like, when a vocalist has, like, a certain background of what they wanted to do? Like, clearly you were more influenced by, like, the industrial bands, but then you would go on to be in a very, very revolutionary metal band. You know, Randy from Lamb of God was more of a punk rock guy, and now he's in unimaginably a metal band. I feel like most metal singers did not start off as metal singers. Uh, well, I would agree with that. Um, it's the fact that their personal style comes into the fray of of the, the rest of the group is that what that's that's what makes it special. That's what makes it stand out. Yeah. Now in addition to, you know, with these two projects you're on, you've also collaborated with a lot of artists, like uh, um, such as Where is the Blood with Delane. You were on a, you know, a ministry, you were a guest spot on Ministry Songs. I know they did a song with Spine Shank. When it comes to collaborating with different artists, is that also a different mind frame, or is there kind of like a usual method behind the madness that almost applies to everything? Well, it's when, when artists, when like Delane or Ministry come to me, they they want to hear me. That's why they're getting me. So I'm going to give them uh, whatever I'm inspired by. Uh, when I was working with, you know, like Mark with Delane, they had an idea of what they want me to do. So like, okay, we'll do this. And, uh, you know, so it's, 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 it's actually easier when you have someone who has a vision to help you, you know, do the, you know, help you record your vocals for their vision. So for, you know, doing that is, you know, it's, it's, it's easy because I really don't have to do any more doing in the thinking. The idea is already there. Yeah. It's almost kind of like when you collaborate with somebody that kind of did all the hard work for you in a way. You're absolutely right. 
So every, I think every artist, if if only you did collaborations from now on, you would have the easiest music career out there, right? Exactly. Well, when I do collaborations now, I, I let them know it's like, okay, you know, I'm gonna do what I do, and uh, you know. I hope you like it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, now, another question I was... Because you mentioned that you write poetry and you write lyrics all the time. When it comes to getting into that creative mode, when you feel like the urge to write, do you almost kind of need to be in a certain place at a certain time to get inspired? Or does inspiration sometimes strike at like times you wouldn't even expect it? Well, you can't force inspiration. Inspiration strikes like lightning. It just comes when it comes. And, you know, for me, it, it, it comes various times during the day. Sometimes it, you know, it comes when I happen to be sitting at my desk. Sometimes it comes when I'm laying in bed trying to sleep and a thought comes in my head. And all of a sudden I can't stop thinking about it, so I have to get out of bed, go to my bed and start writing it down. So inspiration just comes when it does, you know. It's not a muse to be controlled. It's, it's a muse that approaches you and, and touches you with the ideas. And it's something, you just can't control it. Yeah, I'd imagine it strikes at some of the most inconvenient times, right? Oh, yeah. Most of the time when I don't have a journal on me. <laughs> it's like, okay, I can't write it down. i got to remember it. <laughs> Oh, uh, and then you're like saying it to yourself at like the supermarket or humming it to yourself like on the train or something like that and everybody gives yeah. you those looks. Oh, I, I used to write lyrics on the bus all the time on the train. Um, you know, I, you know, inspiration comes when it does. You know, it, uh, I will write, you know, sometimes I have something to write on and sometimes I don't. Uh, but it does come. Um, so... You know, when you have that ability, you know, I, I have inspiration even comes to me in my dreams. And I, I will remember it when I wake up, and I'll have to write it down. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all about memory retention at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and being that, like, you put, you wear your heart on your sleeve for Ascension of the Watchers, like, do you kind of want to leave the music open to interpretation? Or being that, you know, this is really expressing who you personally are, that you kind of maybe want a listener to sort of see things from your point of view? Well, I, I will write things from my... I, I write lyrics and I write ideas from my perspective. Uh, it's always personal. And uh, it's... it's The interpretation is my own. But when a listener, you know, someone who comes and listens to it, just like all music, I will take my own feelings at that time and interpret it in my own way. And I have a feeling a lot of listeners do that as well with all types of music. So interpretation, you know, it doesn't have to be the way that I interpret it. I would hope that the uh, listener would take their own inter interpretation and, and then come up with another idea or somehow they relate to it with their own life and uh, they, can, they can put it into their own words. So... You know, interpretation is is everybody's game. It's it's all it all really really depends on how that person feels at that moment. Yeah, fair enough. And I'd imagine, like too, like the longer you're working on something, the harder it is to kind of almost capture a moment, right? Well, yeah, it is. Um, and so that's why during the whole you know during the writing process of a song, I'm writing notes down of what I'm thinking of. So I don't lose those thoughts that, that uh, so I don't lose those thoughts on the song. So when it's time to really compile lyrics, I have all those together. It's like, okay, this is what I remember now. And it just all comes together like a puzzle. Yeah, definitely. And you grow so much as an artist, too. Like, I'd imagine that, like, you know, if you, you couldn't, there, and a lot has happened in 12 years, that, like, I'd imagine that you couldn't have wrote this album back in, you know, 2010. You couldn't have written this album, you know, like the same time you put out The Industrialist or Genexus. I'd almost feel like that every album really is a representation or a self-portrait of who you are at this particular time, right? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this album... Apocrypha is a, Apocrypha is a, representation, a representation of where I am right now, telling stories uh, of reflection over the past 12 years, and here is 
and everything consolidated into one piece. Almost like a magnum opus. It's like just everything just comes together to create this piece. And, uh, you know, it's... And I believe everything came... Everything happened in the time period that it was supposed to. It all came to this point for a reason. And here we are. Yeah. And I think really being that this is so open to interpretation and it's you, like... Uh, and this will lead me into my final question, but I feel like that this is a record that many people do need at the times of uncertainty that we're currently living in. I feel like that both the music in itself and the melody that you sing about, even if like, and not to discredit your vocals, but I even feel like if, if this was an instrumental album, it would really convey a lot of emotion that people are relating to. Absolutely. For me, it's, uh, you know, it's you know, I'm inspired by film. I'm inspired by soundtracks. And uh, I wanted to create a soundtrack for my vocals that I could sing on top of. And I feel like I did that. And if there were no vocals, I think it still could stand on its own because that's, that's the type of music I love. I like soundtracks that don't have vocals. I listen to soundtracks more often sometimes than regular albums. Yeah, soundtracks are the best. Do you listen to video game soundtracks at all too? I mean, come on, the Mortal Kombat uh, background, you had to. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not a, I'm not a video game player. Okay, fair enough. Not, not my thing. But if you like soundtracks, you should listen to the group Two Steps From Hell. Have you ever heard of them? No, but look, let me write that down. Two, what's the Two Steps From Hell? Yeah, yeah, they, they're like, uh, they, they write like uh, soundtracks for like a lot of like epic movies. So like, it's like modern classical music. Oh, cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. And uh, that leads me to my final question is that when it comes to being an artist, you know, people really resonate with your work. Like with both your work in Fear Factory, your work with Ascension of the Watchers, and even all the collaborative efforts that you've done, people really resonated with your vocals and your lyrics. When you hear on how somebody connects with the art that you create, does that change on how you look at yourself as an artist as well? Um, honestly, no, it doesn't change me at all. Um, I, I, I do feel uh, honored that you know people might see me in that way. It doesn't change who I am. Uh, it's I, I'm happy that people are able to connect with it and people understand it or, and get their own interpretation or uh, help them through a t hard time. So that's what music's for. Music is for. Uh, to soothe the soul, music is to to relay stories and, and convey emotion. And if I'm able to do that for one person, I feel I've been a uh, for me it's a success. You know, that I've it's not, it's not like I've done my job, but yes, I I'm doing something that's good for humanity. <laughs> Definitely, and I think it's fair to say that you've predicted a lot of the future as well. Just saying. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sad at the same time. It's, uh, I see things happen, and and the way I see things now, uh, and the way I see the future now, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I, I, well, I mean, I'm just saying that I've had to listen to Demanufacture every time I'm on my way to an Apple store, just because of how frustrating it is. <laughs> so. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, just, you know, obviously thanks to a virus that I'm not naming on my outlet because I don't want to give it any publicity. Um, obviously, you know, live shows aren't happening now, but is there a chance that maybe you could bring some Ascension of the Watchers to the live presence when shows can happen again? You're absolutely right on that. We are definitely planning to do shows when shows are allowed to happen. Uh, we are also in the planning stages of something special, like a streaming thing related this year. So keep your eye on that. It's in the pl early planning stages, but uh, we're going to be dropping news real soon about that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Burton. Everybody, we are here with Burton C. Bell of Ascension of the Watchers and Fear Factory. Be sure to pick up the new album, Apocrypha, coming out October 9th. This is Alex from Heaven, New York, and we will see you next time.